Okay, so this is the first video of option C, fresh water for IP geography, and the topic is the drainage basin, and then these are the um, like subtopics that we'll go through, and you have to be aware of all of these factors of inputs, outputs, flows, stores, and how these all kind of contribute to the open system of the river, or why, of the drainage basin, so why is the drainage basin considered an open system? So first let's just look at a diagram of a drainage basin, basin <laughs> just to have an idea. Um, okay, so these are kind of features you should be aware of. I'm going to leave out meander and levee for now because those will be like more detailed in a later video. But, okay, so every river has its source, so where it starts has a confluence, confluences where two rivers meet, so this intersection, tributary, a smaller river flowing into a larger one. The river, of course, is just this, and this is the channel, like the main channel of the river. Estuaries, which are kind of streams within the delta at the mouth, so this is the delta of like deposited sediment from the river. And then the mouth is where the river ends. There's also such thing as a watershed, which is like the area separating two drainage basins, which is normally like kind of like looks like that around the drainage basin. Um, yeah, okay. Also, the drainage basin basically is defined as the area drained by a river. Okay, so here's another diagram, but I'm gonna like come back and refer to this later. But first of all, we're going to cover input. So types and intensity of precipitation. So there are these four types of precipitation. Rain, freezing rain, sleet, and snow. Okay, so these the type of precipitation depends upon the degree of warm air in the atmosphere. And the warmer the air is, the more likely is that it will be liquid rain. So basically... Direct precipitation into the channel is one of the key like inputs into the river. Um, but one thing to notice is that if you have freezing rain, sleet, or snow, it might be possible that if these land on surfaces like outside of the river, on the banks, or just on the floodplain, um, or in, somewhere outside the drainage basin that's not the channel, it's kind of maybe less likely that it will directly flow as surface runoff into the river because it is like frozen so it might melt over time or it might just stay that way depending on the like uh, weather conditions um so that's just something to keep in mind and then we have intensity of the rain so there's different types of precipitation there's light rain moderate rain heavy rain and violent rain um and this is just something to keep in mind like obviously if there's more um violent rain like larger volumes than larger volumes in the same amount of time like per hour then the input would be larger okay and now we're gonna look okay and then i'll come back to this so here are, here's our main input precipitation so that's basically coming into the um drainage basin okay now we're gonna look at flows so infiltration through flow of land flow and base flow. So infiltration is the downward movement of water into the soil surface. So infiltration in this case is right here. So it's going into the soil. And then we have through flow, which is the movement of water through the soil layer. So this flow here. So this is the water table and this is like the soil and this is the ground water store so this is soil moisture and this is groundwater so make sure you know the difference between those two because through flow only occurs above the water table okay then we have overland flow and surface runoff which is the movement of water over the surface of the land usually when the ground is saturated frozen impermeable or when precipitation is too intense for infiltration to occur so surface runoff here is just right here obviously it's on the surface so, for example, if precipitation came down here, then it would likely kind of run off the surface, um, given that it was maybe saturated or impermeable or frozen into the channel. And then we have base flow, which is water that reaches the channel largely through slow through flow from and from permeable rock below the water table. Um, 
Okay, so that in this diagram is shown right here. So it's flowing from the groundwater store into the um, channel. Okay, and then these are some more definitions that aren't mentioned on the syllabus points, but still are very important to know. So channel flow is the movement of water within the river channel, also known as discharge. So just this flow of the channel itself. Groundwater flow is the movement of water through underlying permeable rock strata below the water table. So as I mentioned, below the water table is the groundwater store and this flow is called groundwater flow. And then we have percolation, which is the movement of water from the soil water storage to the groundwater storage. So basically between the water table from here to here, this is percolation. Uh, stem flow is water running down a plant stem or a tree trunk. So here there's vegetation. So if precipitation leads to interception, which we'll discuss next, um, it's likely that that water will like drip down the plants and then kind of find its way to the river channel. Okay, now we're going to look at stores. Oh, wait. Okay, stores. So these are the different like places that um, water in the drainage basin base bro I can't say it water in the drainage basin might be stored so vegetation so in vegetation water is stored through interception so this is when vegetation intercepts rainfall and stores it there so that would be right here and then we have soil so soil water storage um received by infiltration as we just saw infiltration and then that goes into the soil water store and then we have in aquifers so aquifers are located in the groundwater storage zone and those are received by percolation in porous rocks here then finally in the cryosphere it's basically all the water that's stored in a frozen state so this diagram shows ice caps snow glaciers lake or river ice, permafrost, sea ice, icebergs, ice shelves, snow again, and ice sheets. Like this is all part of the cryosphere, so that's obviously water that's being stored, even though it is frozen. Okay, now we're gonna. Okay, wait. Okay, so let's just do a little overview. So this has its inputs, and oh, wait. Wait. I'm so confused now. Oh, okay, this makes sense. Okay, yes, let me go back. So, yeah, so we have our inputs, precipitation, we have all these processes and stores, and then we also have our outputs, evaporation and transpiration, um, which is basically how the... Oh my gosh, I skipped a slide. Ugh. Okay, I was wondering why I didn't go through outputs. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to do it now. Okay, so <laughs> evaporation is the process through which a liquid is converted into a gas, so from water to water vapor. Transpiration is the process of water evaporating through the leaves of plants and trees and then being returned to the atmosphere. Evapotranspiration is the process of evaporation and transpiration combined. So as you can see from here, evaporation is this kind of water becoming like from liquid to its gaseous state as water vapor in the atmosphere. And this also happens in plants as transpiration. So remember the difference between evaporation and transpiration because transpiration is only from vegetation. Okay, now this is like a summary. So why is the drainage basin an open system? Well, they have inputs and outputs. Water enters the system as precipitation, as we saw, and leaves the system through evaporation, transpiration, and river discharge. So basically because it has inputs and outputs, so it is a system that's like continuous. Um, as, and it has, you know, the inputs, the stores, the flows, and then the outputs. Okay.